All right, this demo is going to be on the cross base. It's your first metric part. So um, I've got my uh, my drawing started here, just a plain old using my last template file. You know, the one with the uh, the one with the um, xxx. So we have all our dimension styles in there. It's all good to go. All the layers are good to go. So we have all our layers in there. All good. Okay. So um, if you look at the size of the part, you'll notice that there are numbers um, that look like that, kind of 114, 32, um, 36. Those are all metric numbers, so they're in millimeters. There's actually 25.4 of millimeters in an inch. So that 114, if there's 25 millimeters in an inch, yeah, is a little over four inches, maybe four and a half inches long. Okay, which is going to fit on our paper just fine. But we have to do a couple of things to get that set up. All right, so here we go. Um, the first thing is if I drew my line, and I did a line, and I do my normal like this, right, and I do my normal like that, um, and then I look at the size of the part, and it says 114, so I offset, and I say 114, enter, and I pick this line, and I go that way, where's the line? Well, if I zoom way out, You'll notice that the line's way out here because, you know, our paper's set up to be 17 by 11. And metric, you kind of have to change things up a little bit. All right, so that's not going to work for us. So here's what you're going to do. Um, get this back where I should be here. Um, you can always go Z, Enter, A, Enter to get back to your original coordinates. All right, there we go. So what now I'm going to do is I'm going to set up what's called the limits. It's the size of the paper. So the way this works is normally we have 70, 17 inches long but there's 25.4 millimeters in an inch. So if I did 17 times 25.4, the equivalent millimeters to 17 inches is eh, like 430. Don't worry about the 1.8, we'll just call it 430, all right? And then going up and down vertically, we have, set, uh, we have 11 inches. So if I go 11 times 25.4, so to turn the 11 inches into millimeters, we get something like, we'll call it 280, 279, 280, good enough, all right? Those, mil those uh, limits don't have to be perfect, but they should be pretty ballpark. So we had 430 and 280. So what you're going to do is you're going to do what's called setting the limits. You're going to go L-I-M-I-T-S, limits, hit enter. Now the low, what it wants you now to do is do the lower left corner which is your, basically your x, y kind of origin, like in math class, and that's going to be 0, comma 0, enter. And then it's going to ask you for the upper right corner. This is where we're going to kind of convert that, what was a smaller number, into our metric number. And what we had is in the x direction, we had 430, comma, and I can't see the comma when I put it in, and then 280. You've got to put the comma between the 430 and the 280, it won't work. Hit enter. Now, you'll notice if I go down to my coordinates here, nothing changes. It's still kind of smaller numbers. But if I type Z, enter, and then A, enter, zoom all, you'll notice now that the coordinates are bigger numbers. They're, we're kind of basically tricking AutoCAD into thinking in metric when it's really, you know, just thinking in units because AutoCAD really doesn't know the difference between an inch and a, and a millimeter. It just knows units. All right, so now we have an appropriate number of units. Now. So let's start this thing off again. So if I do my boom, boom, and then I look at the size, it says 114. So I'm going to offset, and it's going to be 114. And I'm going to pick the line, and now that looks like a normal number. That looks pretty good. Um, so we're off and running. So let me see. Um, the height of this thing, <clears throat> it's a little tricky on this one. The height of this thing is actually 36 minus 11, which is 25, plus 19, which is 44. Now, you don't see a 44 on there, but that's how high it's going to end up being because this surface right here is lower than this surface right here. All right, so it kind of goes up not quite far enough and then down and then up a little further. All right, so it's going to be 44 tall. So that said, we're going to offset 44. And we're going to go ahead and boom. And well, I don't know if I did. I did 114, didn't I? So let me try that again. Um, offset distance is 44. Enter. And we'll pick that line and go up. That looks good. All right. Now, how far between the views? And you'll say like two inches, right? Give or take, maybe three inches if you need more space. So if I do offset and I do offset distance of two and I pick my line, 
Look how small that is. The reason that that's so small is because we're thinking in, in um, inches. So what we have to do is we have to think, well, let's see, two inches is how much we normally put between the views. But there's 25.4 millimeters in an inch, so how far should we go between the views? And so, you know, 25.4 times 2, give it, give it about 50. Now, if you need more, then you can go maybe 75 if you're thinking like about three inches, depending on how many dimensions you have between the views. I'm going to do two, and we can always, in AutoCAD, we can always move the views around, so it's all right. I'm going to offset, but this time I'm going to go 50. Pick my line, boom, pick my line, boom, and I'm off and running. And then it uh, looks like the width of this part is 64. So then I would do uh, offset, offset, this is 64, and boom, boom, and boom, boom. And then I've got my mirror line there, so I go to my construction layer. And oh, this, this template doesn't have a construction layer on it, so just use your construction layer and so you and then you're off and running okay so um, and then you start making your part um, now as you make your part I'm gonna go ahead and just delete this I'm, I want to I don't want to watch don't wait to watch me make the part because you don't need me to make the part I'm just gonna go ahead and take this steal it there right click clipboard copy right click clipboard paste Okay, so when you draw the thing, it's going to end up looking something like this. Uh, actually, I missed a hidden line on here. Let me fix that. I'm not really concerned if you know what the solution is to the problem. I would prefer you to figure it out yourself, but if you need to look at this, you can. So these are actually hidden lines. See hidden two? Um, that's a hidden two as well. It's not even a hidden one, and not much is happening. But if you look at it closely... Uh, it's kind of hard to tell with this because the hidden two is really small right there. Um, what I'm going to do now is because the, the drawing is so big, we're actually not seeing our, um, our hidden lines. So in order to see those, you have to do what's called a line type scale. So you're going to type the word L-T-S-C-A-L-E, line type scale, enter. And instead of a number like 0.5 or 1, um, we're going to use a number like either 25 or even 12, and you have to just kind of decide what you think it looks like right there. The hidden lines should all look pretty similar. I don't really like the way this looks right here. I'm going to change that just to regular hidden. If you have real thin parts, like a lot of times I'll go to the hidden too because you need you know smaller lines. But as long as you have a couple, you're fine. If you can't get one out of there, if you only have one, then I want you to change to hidden too. All right. So now we have, um, you know, the part looks something like that. You know, you've got it solved there. Let's go ahead and put in some. I'm, you know, I'm going to wait on putting in the center marks. I oh, you know what, never mind. I'm going to make them. Never mind, I changed my mind. Center mark, uh, annotate, center mark. Sometimes the dimensions, you'll notice that the center marks get a little funky there because the metric gets them kind of goofy. All right, so um, next thing you're going to need is you're going to need to dimension it. So I'm just going to throw a dimension on there and show you one of the issues that we have. Um, I'm in the XX dimension style. I'm going to go to um, home. Let's go and put this on dimension layer. And let's throw a dimension in here. From here to here. It should be 114, right? See 114 right there? You can, you can see that, right? Look, just squint. Right there, squint. See right there? See 114? And you see the arrowheads. Oh, they're there. And you see the gap? No, oh, it's there, but it's really small. So basically, our dimension style is kind of all goofy because everything's bigger. Um, the dimension is actually the same size we had before, but because everything's bigger, it makes the dimension look smaller. So we're going to go ahead and delete that. So we have to make a new dimension style. And uh, it's going to go something like this. I'm going to go to annotate. We're going to go to dimensions. We'll come over here to the side arrow. And we go back to, and you remember this, we've done this before. Uh, right there, I'm just going to. I've already made one of these, so just ignore it. Um, just, you can use one of your starters right there, and you're just going to do a new one. And you can call this something like um, metric, I'll call this metric X. So this means it's just one decimal point. I think on this particular drawing problem, we don't have any decimals, so this should be pretty good. And then what you're going to do is you're going to set up some things. Uh, the main thing is this is all set up properly. So if you've used your other style, the, the lines are fine. Simples and arrows, they're fine. This number should be bigger. Uh, I'm going to go 0 0.09 on that. Um, and then text, 0.125, what it should be. And then fit. Here's where um, things change. So what you're going to do is on this, is you're going to make everything basically 25 times bigger. So here I'm going to go 25.4. And what that's going to do is it's going to make all those other numbers 
25 times bigger. The gap between the extension line and the dimension line, the size of the arrows, the size of the text, it's all going to get bigger. Primary units, and then we'll just go ahead and change that to just whole numbers because that's what we're doing on this one. Um, in metric, if they have a zero, they actually do have zeros before the number, although that's not going to really play here, but they don't, they put the zero in front of the millimeter if that happens. Okay, so we have a new dimension style. And it's, we'll call it metric X. Again, ignore that one right there. All right. And I'm going to set current. So that is now my current um, dimension style. Okay, now let's go back in dimension. Dimension. Uh, let's go linear. And you'll notice now when I put the dimension in that the number is bigger, the arrows are bigger, the gap between the extension line and dimension line is bigger, and so on. Okay, I'm going to let you dimension this. I'm not going to give you the solution on how to dimension it. You should know how to dimension by now. All the same rules as before, pretty much. Um, when you're done, you're going to have a title block. And you're going to, um, let me just go ahead and get rid of this uh, viewport here. And let's make a viewport. Got one more surprise here for you. So viewport. So let's go ahead and lay out rectangle and let's make, our, make our viewport. You notice I make my viewport outside the border so that nothing crops. And then, of course, the scale is one to one. I showed you it fit no problem on the paper, right? Because this length of the front was only, you know, like four inches. So I'm going to pick that, right click, properties. And notice the paint, notice the thing. We're going to go ahead and do our standard scale at one to one. And uh oh. So if one to one, remember the thing is like 114 long, right? So AutoCAD doesn't understand that we're trying to squeeze millimeters onto this kind of inch problem here. So here is the game. Um, let me do my calculator here. What we're going to do is we're going to scale the drawing down, and it's going to go something like this. Um, it's basically 1 over 25.4, so uh, 1 divided by 25.4 equals. You get a number like 0.0393. Okay, anything close to that's going to be fine. 03. 93. So, or 0394, if you will. All right. So, if you remember that number right there, um, 0393. And we take that into custom scale and plop that in, 0 0.0393. That is your magic number. Or you could do it this way if you wanted to. You could do um, 10 over 254. You have to do it that way because. Uh, AutoCAD doesn't like the decimals in the denominator. So I just basically moved the decimal point over twice. So kind of the same thing right there. Get the same number. All right. Now, you'll notice that the, um, the thing fits no problem, but now the, the center lines and all the hidden lines and all that, they're all goofed up. So um, what you have to do is you have to go back and change that line type scale back to 1. So the viewport, when you do all that, is changing the line type scale at the same time. So once you get to this spot, just go back into AutoCAD and you're going to type LT scale again. And you're going to set it back to 1 or 0.5. I'm going to do 1. And you'll notice that the, the center lines and hidden lines are all kind of back the way they're supposed to be. And that's pretty much it. Um, when you go to the uh, title block here, you are no longer in inches. You are going to be in millimeters. Make sure you spell that right. So it's M-I-L-L-I-M-E-T-E-R-S. And then if there were fillets and rounds, they could be a different thing. I don't think there's any fillets and rounds on the cross space here, so I think you're off and running. Titles, cross space, you know, you guys have that part, no problem. Um, I didn't finish the dimension on this, but the dimension on this isn't too bad. Um, you should get that checked with, you know, make your, your sketch checked and stuff. So that is the um, metric, um, the first metric part. Now, when you're done, you're going to save this. File save as. I'm going to save this. I'm just going to save it on my desktop here so I don't mess up my next one here. Um, I'm going to call this, uh, what's this, C? I'll just call it cross space. Okay, so I've saved my file. It's saved. It's in the bank. Now, if I'm doing another metric file, I don't want to have to do all that stuff that I just did. Again, I don't want to have to set the, uh, the viewport. I don't want to have to... Uh, New, make a new dimension style. Um, I don't want to do the LT scale and all that stuff. I want that to all be done. So what you're going to do is kind of what we did before. We're going to go ahead and take that drawing. After you've saved it, we're going to delete it. I'm going to put this back on the object layer because that's where I like to start. And what I want you to do is save this as a metric B border. So you're going to go File, Save As. 
and you're going to save that um, in your documents. Now you should already have a B border, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to save this as a template file in your documents. And again, you've already got your, uh, you know, your, your borders there. And then what I want you to call this, I'd like you to call it your name. I'd like you to call it metric B border. So just put metric in front of that. So that means that if you have a metric problem, you're going to want to use this template. But if you have an American file, you want to use the, you know, the other one, the one that has just, that's just set up, you know, for that. So now if I was to start a new file, let me get out of that. If I was to start a new file, file new, and I go to my file, now you should have choices between a metric and an American, depending on which one you want to do. So, you know, depending on what the next file is, then that's what you would go for. All right, that's pretty much it. That's your first metric drawing.